Live from downtown Bakersfield, 23 ABC News starts now. Dozens coming out to have their voice heard concerning homelessness in Bakersfield. What locals are saying about two options presented during a meeting for a proposed low barrier homeless shelter. Plus honoring those who serve the community every day. We'll tell you when and where the BPD is holding their annual award ceremony. And Boots Chaps in cowboy hats kicking off the Old West in style. Details on the Whiskey Flat Days kickoff dinner coming up. Good morning and thanks for joining us for 23 ABC News at 6 a.m. I'm Danielle Kernkamp. I'm Mike Hart. Glad you're here. Let's bring in Chief Meteorologist Elena Rusk. Uh, because uh, we're talking, it was clear and calm overnight? Was it, it was. really? Yeah, so. Slept right through it? <laughs> you <laughs> did. That's why the fog formed. Ah, Yeah, of we've had fog trying to form all oh, week because hello. we're so saturated, right? But there was always a little bit of a breeze or a little bit of cloud cover. We weren't quite to that 100% saturation, so it was just patches mm -hmm. of dense fog. Now it's been most of the valley filling in this morning because we were so clear and calm overnight 46 right now that dew point at 44 whenever those numbers are matching you know we have the saturation but the cool thing is there is a cool front moving mm -hmm. on through in these early hours and that's helping to kind of stir things up so even though we have more fog this morning than the rest of the week we actually will see it dissipate faster near zero visibility that means just a few hundred feet to a quarter mile in the north county and much of Bakersfield is very gray as well that dense fog advisory from the National Weather Service overnight just included the north county and then earlier this morning it was expanded for all of the Kern County Valley locations because we are seeing it form but it's short-lived see all of that weather up to the north that's helping to provide some mixing a loft that means a breeze and no fog delays are reported this morning even though we do have that dense fog out there we're watching it anytime we're in the 40s like we have now we have that fog but by 9 a.m it's at 50 i think we're mixing out and then we get the 60s with passing clouds this afternoon that's a nice day as for our roadways no slowing no crashes like we mentioned no fog delays so you're good to go yep. The homeless shelter community meeting, allowing people to express their opinions and discuss a second proposed location. This all comes weeks after the city council pressed pause on going forward on the Calcott location off East Brundage. 23 ABC's Josh Sanders has details on what was to talked about at last night's meeting. Tuesday night, the city of Bakersfield holding the first of two community forums to give residents a chance to weigh in on the homeless crisis facing the city. What happens when you take all the homeless people and put them in one spot? What happens to that neighborhood? The homeless are already in our area. You're just trying to keep them here. Mm. Why not have more than one center instead of just one? Are they going in despite the shelter, or is it only contingent upon the shelter being built? City staff presenting two possible locations for a new low barrier homeless shelter. The Calcott property located on East Brundage and another property located on Brown Street in East Bakersfield. You folks are polite. <laughs> Always and I, are. And I want to compliment you for being polite. I know there are differences of opinion. Everywhere I go, I'm told, don't put it there. Tonight's meeting was one of three tasks City Council directed staff with before next year's January 22nd meeting, making a decision on a new homeless shelter along with the cost benefit analysis of locations meeting shelter criteria. I'm glad we've started this conversation with the communities uh, you know, that we're looking to build a shelter in. I think it's important that the community have input. I think it's important the community understand what it is that we're trying to do. The Calcott property is located in Council Member Willie Rivera's ward and according to city staff fulfills requirements based on cost size and potential for growth. The Brown property lands within council member Andre Gonzalez's ward, already home to the mission at Kern County and Bakersfield Homeless Shelter. According to city officials, smaller in size and limited in growth. Brown Street has a lot of problems. Uh, namely, it is very close within a block and a half from the existing uh, from an existing homeless shelter. Number two, uh, it is directly across the street from a residential community. Tonight's conversation was a starter as the community continues to look at the homeless crisis together. The issue of our state and our community. This is our community together. In Bakersfield, Josh Sanders, 23ABC, connecting you. Now the next meeting is set for next Monday, December 16th at the MLK Community Center on South Owen Street. A popular neighborhood project is getting ready to reopen for business and give back to the Bakersfield Homeless Center. Dustin's Diner started back in 1993. It was the brainchild of brothers Dustin and David Kilpatrick, who were 9 and 11 years old at the time. It's located in the Hagen Oaks neighborhood, which gets decked out in its holiday decorations. Lights are lit and cookies, hot chocolate and apple cider are all sold to the community. The proceeds go to the Homeless Center. Last year, they raised almost $15,000. Dustin's Diner 
Diner opens Friday at 2301 Hagen Oaks Boulevard and goes until December 23rd. It's open Sunday through Thursday, 6 to 8 p.m. and Friday and Saturday, 6 to 9 p.m. They do good business. Mm -hmm. The Bakersfield Police Department's hosting their annual awards ceremony this morning to recognize those who have gone above and beyond the call of duty. Take a look at some video from last year's ceremony that will be held at the department's headquarters in the auditorium. Several awards are expected to be given out beginning at 10 o'clock this morning. In education news, Cal State Bakersfield's gearing up to celebrate hundreds of graduates during its fall commencement today. According to school officials, the increasing number of graduates at the school has prompted the graduation ceremony. CSUB said around 500 undergrads have registered to participate in the ceremony, as well as 53 master's candidates. The fall ceremony will be held tonight at 7 o'clock at Mechanics Bank Arena, formerly Rabobank Arena. It is official. Tickets are now on sale for the 63rd annual Whiskey Flat Days kickoff dinner. A dinner starts the countdown for the Whiskey Flat Days mayor race, where candidates will try their best to bribe you for your votes. The mayor race fundraiser dates back 63 years, generating funds that go right back into the Kernville community. It's $32 a person for that dinner, and of course that includes, includes your choice of a tri-tip or chicken dinner. The event will be held on January 3rd of next year at 6 o'clock in the evening. Evening, located at 125 Buena Vista Drive in Kernville. Once again, 23 ABC teaming up with the CHP to help local kids celebrate the holidays. The Chips for Kids toy drive is underway and local officers are collecting new and unwrapped toys and other items for kids of all ages. It all began nine years ago with a couple hundred kids. Now they help out nearly 4,000. Take a look at the at your generosity. There it is on display and they need more than just toys. They ask for things like blankets, clothes, shoes and more. If you'd like to help them out, you can drop off your donation at any local Walgreens, Motor City in the Auto Mall, Furniture City off Weibel and Ming, the CHP's headquarters and right here at our 23 ABC studios on 21st Street downtown. The toy drive ends next Monday. Time Magazine has chosen Greta Thunberg, a Swedish climate climate crisis activist as their person of the year. Of course, each year the magazine features the most influential person, group, movement or idea of the previous 12 months. The shortlist for this year included Donald Trump, Nancy Pelosi, the whistleblower and the Hong Kong protesters. The announcement also included others as well as Lizzo for the entertainment of the year for athlete of the year, the US women's soccer team and Bob Iger featured as the business person of the year and of course of course, Baby Yoda made an appearance. How could he not? Crab Radio wants to invite you for their return of a rocking Christmas concert tonight in downtown Bakersfield. This show is promising fans to be better than ever with performances by Stephen Jenkins of Third Eye Blind, Dreamers, Winnetka Bowling League, The Unlikely Candidates, and Western Medicine. Tickets are still on sale. You can get those at the box office. Doors open at 5 and the show starts tonight at 6 o'clock. If you are looking for something else to do tonight, you can get on your bike and go for a ride under a foggy moon. No, the full moon. Sorry, I said fog. <laughs> the full moon bike ride begins at 7 o'clock at Beach Park. It will follow the Kern River Parkway Trail, leaving Beach Park, and then turn south at CSUB, continue through campus, and end at the marketplace. People of all ages are encouraged to come out, and the uh, organizers recommend strongly that you wear a helmet and a front-facing headlamp, and uh, we were discussing this earlier, Elena, maybe throw in a lot of reflective clothing, mm -hmm. reflective tape out there. Exactly. I think it'll drop to the 50s. It'll be cool out there. We should have some high, thin passing clouds. Fog may start forming like we had yesterday evening, but I think this morning is the foggiest morning, but there's still patches out there that'll be pretty dense for the next couple mornings. A dense fog advisory has been expanded earlier in the night. It just included the northern valley cities like Delano, McFarland, and it was expanded into Bakersfield early this morning, and it's in effect until 10 a.m. High pressure will then build in this afternoon into tonight with that temperature start climbing about 10 degrees above average for the end of the week. And then our next storm arrives Saturday. So for right now, it just looks like 30% chance of rain, no snow and just scattered showers out there. But if there are any thunderstorms in those areas where there are cells forming, they will have some more of that rain falling. As we take a look downtown, calm, quiet. That's why it's so gray and dreary out there. We did have a trough passing through overnight, but it wasn't able to mix things out the way we 
we expected, so that's why so much fog has formed. But it has been breezy and cold up in the mountains where you have crystal clear air. We like that here on the valley floor with fog this morning. We then have moderate air quality this afternoon. You see those high passing clouds just coming through now. No rain in those clouds overnight. It was that trough coming through with that cold front that brought some showers north of us, and now it's just some passing clouds. So pretty quiet day actually. I think we're getting to 63. I think there will be passing clouds, but more sunshine than yesterday. The fog dissipates faster than yesterday as well. So it's a quiet day and we'll talk about warming for the rest of the week and look ahead to that weekend storm coming up.